Hello, welcome back to Math 112, Calculus 2. Our topic in this lecture is power series. Power series are polynomials which may be infinite and a function can be written as a power series using special mathematical techniques. A power series about x equals 0 is of the form, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of c sub n times x to the n. So it would be c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared and so on. c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared plus c3x cubed and you just keep going with n increasing up to infinity. Some power series are finite. A power series centered at x equals a, taken about the point x equals a, is of the form the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of c sub n times x minus a to the power n. So that would be c0 plus c1 times x minus a plus c2 times x minus a squared and so on. In this definition, c0, c1, c2 and so on are all constants and they are called the coefficients of the power series. Now here is an example. Suppose we have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. We can write that as 1 over 1 minus x, simply because we're using the geometric series formula. Of course, we do have to require that the absolute value of x be less than 1, in the same way that we have that requirement for the geometric series theorem. So we can actually write 1 over 1 minus x as a polynomial, an infinite polynomial, a power series, by simply using the geometric series formula. Now let's take a look at another example. What we see is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the 2n is just the same use of the geometric series theorem, but in this case r equals x squared instead of x. We get this to be equal to 1 over 1 minus x squared. So we get 1 plus x squared plus x to the 4th plus x to the 6th and so on equals 1 over 1 minus x squared. We notice that both sides represent an even function. And we also see that uh, whenever a function is even, all of the powers of x in the power series are also even. And that's part of the reason why the term even is used and it originated from Taylor series expressions, power series expressions of functions. If we look at convergence, we see that a lot of the series we just saw require r in the geometric series theorem to be less than 1 in order for the series to converge. The ratio and alternating series tests, as well as the absolute convergence tests, may also be applied to power series in order to test for conversions. What we really want for power series is called a radius of convergence for the series. A value for which r, if we limit it to that particular region, will yield a series that converges. Now here is a very important convergence theorem. If a power series, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n x to the n, converges for some value x equals c, then it also converges for the absolute value of x less than the absolute value of c. The counterpart to that theorem is another theorem which says if the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n x to the n diverges for x equal d, then it also diverges for the absolute value of x greater than the absolute value of d. Now, power series have a very special property. They converge absolutely, 
within their radius of convergence. And in fact, they converge uniformly, a very special type of convergence, which is a stronger version of the usual convergence of a series. Because of that, we may take term-by-term term differentiation and integration of power series. If we want to find the derivative with respect to x of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n x to the n, well, we differentiate inside of the summation. We're able to interchange the dif differentiation with the summation. And then we arrive at the result that the sum is the sum goes from 0 to infinity, the derivative is n a sub n x to the n minus 1. Similarly, we can integrate term by term. So the integral from 0 to x of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n t to the n is just going to be the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n times x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Now here's an interesting example. Suppose we wanted to find the power series for the function natural log of x taken about the value 1. Well, we can write the natural log of x as the integral from 1 to x of dt over t. So I can rewrite 1 over t as 1 over 1 minus the quantity 1 minus t. So I can write that using the geometric series theorem and remembering that the absolute value of 1 minus t must be less than 1, we can write that as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 minus t to the n dt. So we can now integrate this term, this expression, and we get that the natural log of x is, well, we have to substitute in our limits, the sum from 0 to infinity of negative the quantity 1 minus t to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. And we have our final result when we substitute in the limits. This is a sum from 0 to infinity of negative 1 times 1 minus x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. So we have actually found a power series for natural log of x expanded about the value of x equals 1. And we've done so using the geometric series theorem again. We were talking about convergence of these series. This series only converges where the absolute value of 1 minus x is less than 1, which tells us that x has to be greater than 0 and less than 2. So we notice that since the series is centered at 1, we actually have a radius of convergence of 1. You cannot go away from the center more distance than 1 in order to achieve convergence. You have to stay with inside the center of radius 1. So now let's take a look at another example. Suppose we wish to find the power series for the function 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. We see that the derivative with respect to x of 1 over 1 minus x is 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. So I just have to take the derivative of the power series for 1 over 1 minus x. And that derivative is the sum from 0 to infinity of n x to the n minus 1. We could actually even start that series at n equal 1 because when you plug in at n equals 0, the first term is 0 anyway. So this is a way of using this wonderful term-by-term -term differentiation property of power series in order to find the power series of the function 1 over 1 minus x squared. We're going to be exploring other types of series very soon, Maclaurin series, Taylor series, and so on, and we're going to be talking about them and their properties of convergence in great detail in our next lecture. Hope you can join us then.